Hey everybody, Gene from jeansgreenmachine.com. Today I'm going to show you how to build the easiest, most powerful pedal generator uh, that you could make uh, for a reasonable amount of money. Uh, so uh, what I have here is a um, magnetic resistance pedal generator with a flywheel on it. The flywheel is really helpful. Uh, it helps smooth out the ride and uh, makes it a little more realistic. All right, so what I've done so far is I have removed the mechanical resistance parts from the uh, trainer. Uh, shaft on here is a 10 millimeter uh, steel shaft uh, with enough uh, space on it to um, hook a connector on there. So the connector I am using is a, um, a 10 millimeter um, shaft coupler. Um, and I actually found a motor that is an 8 millimeter motor. It's an RC motor that we will use as the generator for this project. Um, so the 8 millimeter goes on the one end, the 10 millimeter goes on the other end of the shaft of the trainer, and we've got a connection. Um, uh, but the challenge is this, this motor, the outside spins, this part needs to stay stationary. So we use the shroud as a brace to hold the motor in place. Um, so I had to drill a couple holes in here to get it to line up, to get it to hold the motor properly. And I also found that there's a, uh, a little washer, a little uh, lock ring on here that rubs on this, this hole that I cut a little, I drilled a little bigger. Um, so I just add a couple of washers on top of this to give it a little more space. Uh, <clears throat> so, uh, to, to put this on here, first of all, we just take this uh, coupler, put on the 10, 10 millimeter side, make sure we don't push out this uh, flywheel uh, as we put this on there. Seat it in there all the way, give it a, uh, snug it up with the, um, the hex keys, the hex key bolts that are on there, that are on the shaft um, uh, coupler. And then we take the motor and we uh, bolt it onto the uh, shroud. Now you can you can do this a couple of different ways, and I've done it both ways. You can actually use this um, uh, plus bolt star bracket, whatever that comes with the motor, and mount it on the outside, and then put it on there. In the long extended video, I actually do it that way, but it doesn't matter either way. Um, it seems to work just fine. All you're really doing is trying to keep the this. Um, the, uh, keep the motor braced in place while this is being spun. So it's not really serving a lot of purpose of, of uh, strength, it's just to uh, hold the motor in place. All right, let's talk a few minutes about uh, RC motor selection. RC motors come in quite a variety of uh, speeds, uh, powers, and so on. Um, they rate them in kV, so if you have a 1000 kV motor uh, at uh, one volt, it will spin at 1000 RPM. Uh, and uh, so given that, um, you know, this one is actually a, a, a 320 kV. But let me talk about how we got there. So uh, I've written some notes down here just to uh, reference. Uh, a typical mountain bike uh, tire uh, circumference is about 20, uh, uh, 2,068 millimeters. Uh, so given that circumference uh, and that the drive um, wheel on this uh, trainer is 30 millimeters, uh, with making a circumference of 94 and a quarter uh, millimeters. So for every rotation of the tire uh, as you're on the trainer, uh, it's going to rotate uh, about 22, the motor is going to rotate, it, this wheel is going to rotate about 22 times, turning the shaft about 22 times. Um, so a comfortable riding pace is about 15 miles per hour. So at 15 miles an hour, uh, a tire spinning, the tire is spinning around 194 RPM, the bicycle tire. Um, and that's, uh, there's, I have references to those uh, RPMs and so on um, that you can find on my website, jeansgreenmachine.com. Uh, so uh, at 15 RPM, the bicycle trainer drive wheel is gonna be rotating uh, 194 times 22 or 4,268 RPM. Um, so uh, to get around 12 charging volts at 15 miles an hour, 4,268 divided by 12, uh, we get around 355 uh, uh, kV uh, motor that we're looking for. Now there are 350 kV motors out there. Um, I wanted to make the job a little easier to generate power for myself. Um, so I went with the 320 
um, so that way I don't have to pedal as fast to get up to charging voltage. Uh, you can go higher, you can go lower. Uh, if you're a, a roadie, you may want to go to that 350 or even a 380 or a 400. Uh, if you're going to use a, a 24 inch wheel uh, or you want a more casual pedaling pace, uh, you can go to like a 280 uh, kV. All right, so we got our 320 kV motor. Uh, we're going to mount it on the shroud with the holes I already, already drilled um, earlier, which is basically to measure, measure the space between these uh, uh, four mounting points. I'm only going to put two bolts in there. I'm not going to do four because, like I said, it's just going to hold it in place. Um, so then I just line it up with the holes I had drilled earlier. And oops, I need my washers. My washers. So, so I just have a couple little washers to put in there to, to add a little space because the uh, that uh, lock ring uh, will rub on the on the shroud if I don't do this. All right, so bolt it on there, spins free. Um, I've drilled a little access hole in the bottom to make it easier to use my, get my Allen screw in there to, to tighten up the uh, uh, shaft coupler onto the shaft of the motor. Um, so then we just line up the shaft with the uh, uh, shaft coupler and line up these uh, screw points of the motor, um, of the shroud with the uh, other side of the shroud uh, assembly here. Put the Allen bolts on the sh uh, shaft coupler through the little access hole I made in the bottom. So there you go. Motor's connected to the uh, bike trainer. Uh, so now we've got um, three wires that come out of this motor. The three wires are alternating current. Uh, it's just three different uh, phases of alternating current. We, what we need now is a bridge rectifier to convert the three phase of alternating current to direct current. So that's what this uh, bridge rectifier does. There's a little map on the front here that shows uh, what it does exactly or what posts do what. Uh, but these three uh, posts um, have little squigglies on them. You can see that it's the alternating current side. And then on the other side, uh, the plus and the minus uh, is the uh, direct current. Um, so we just need a way to connect these guys to the um, bridge rectifier. Um, you can cut these wires off and use just um, a 3 8 inch spade connector uh, to connect these. Um, I'm going to keep my motor the same, in the same condition it is. And I just made these three um, wires that go from, make a, they have a bullet connector on one end that connects to these um, bullet connectors from the motor. And then the, the 3 8 inch spade connector, that which goes to the alternating current uh, connections on the bridge rectifier. Um, so we just plug those in. Uh, order doesn't matter uh, from the alternating current. Uh, there's three different phases. The three phases are uh, sorted out through the uh, diodes of the bridge rectifier. Now the bridge rectifier uh, serves as a blocking diode as well. So uh, the uh, current is only going to go this way through the through the bridge rectifier. It's not going to it's going to come out here. It's not going to go back into. So if you plug a battery into this side, it's not going to make this motor spin. Uh, so I made this uh, uh, another connector using the XT60 connector and uh, a couple of wires and the two uh, three eighths inch um, uh, uh, female. Um, Speed connectors. So red goes on, uh, red goes on the plus, and black goes on the minus. Um, so then, um, next step along the way is our meter. We just hook our meter to the, the only way it'll go on there if we got it hooked up right. Right up right. Um, so then we can charge, you can see how many watts we're generating. And then uh, what do we need there? Well, we need something to hook it to. Um, so I just, um, you're going to use this uh, 
three outlet socket um, and just put another XT60 connector on there, plug that in, and you've got a couple notes about this project. You can actually go a couple different routes with it. Um, you can actually use a smaller bridge rectifier like this one, um, which I have uh, used in this box. So to make the project a little neater, um, uh, and to be able to mount this box on my handlebars on my bike. Uh, so the meter's in there. The bridge rectifier is actually on the bottom here and it's bolted to the frame of the uh, metal casing here uh, because it needs to be cooled. This, this will get warm. Um, so the cooling fins of this other bridge rectifier actually keep things cool. Uh, this one needs a little extra assistance in cooling when you're generating more than 100 watts. Um, so I got the bike uh, handlebar mount thing on here. Um, three wire cable. So uh, you basically unplug this This guy plugs in. And then we would hook this to the bicycle. And then I use these uh, hook file tape uh, uh, straps to just hold the uh, wire uh, to the bike frame. Alright, I've got the uh, bike installed on the bike trainer uh, with the generator all hooked up. I've uh, hooked up my fancy box with the uh, bridge rectifier inside of it. It's all that's in there is bridge rectifier, a um, drock uh, meter, which I like a lot better because it gives me a cumulative um, uh, watt hour generation, which is kind of cool. It, even when the power goes off, it keeps track of the power that was generated. Um, and then I've got that hooked to an inverter, uh, which will then go to uh, a crock pot, which on low uh, is about 192 watts. On high, it's about 300 and something. <laughs> we'll find out what, uh, momentarily. All right, so we're at about 200 watts. All right, I'm gonna try this again. Uh, got the cockpit on high, which is gonna be close to 400 watts if I can actually get it to uh, to get to the uh, peak of where it needs to be. Um, I don't know if I'm gonna get there, but we'll give it a go. So. Here we go. Well, it looks like we hit the limit of the inverter. It's a 300 watt inverter and we blew the 13 amp fuse in the inverter um, as we were closing in on 400 watts. We hit uh, 376 watts, I think was the peak that uh, I hit while trying to <laughs> power the crock pot here. Uh, so let's see. Uh, let's take a look at the uh, setup we've got here. I got the 320 kV uh, RC motor hooked to the bike trainer. Um, and we could have gone with a 350 or 400 watt, uh, th sorry, 400 kV uh, motor. But this one works really well and is perfect for what I'm trying to accomplish. Uh, you can see where I uh, taped the, uh, hooked the uh, wire to the frame with these uh, hook pile tape connectors just to hold the wire in place so I don't run into it while I'm pedaling. And then it comes right up into the box where I have the uh, bridge rectifier and a meter and a couple of sockets. Um, I like this setup a lot. Um, this drop meter is, is excellent for the uh, uh, purpose I'm using it for. Uh, if you like what I'm doing, uh, click the links below for the uh, Amazon products that uh, I use to build this uh, bike trainer. And uh, I'm going to go get some exercise. Uh, thanks for watching and uh, please subscribe. Thank you.